Hi everybody, it's Peg and it's time to play. I have some 140 pound watercolor paper in an old tub that is salvaged from my mop and some alcohol inks and some water and I am just playing, uh, doing some marbling on this watercolor paper. Now. I have done this a number of different ways with different types of inks, but I don't remember doing it with alcohol ink, so I thought I'd give it a try. I've used the dye-based inks, and I've used shaving cream, and you know, a lot of different techniques, but I haven't done this. Now the one thing that I've learned is I think I want an ink that's a little more viscous than these. Um, these are coming in to turning out a little bit dark and I think it's because these inks are a little bit older and the resin or whatever it is that the epoxy that is in that that sets it up um, has kind of hardened and so it's turned out darker than I want it to. Um, I'm going to experiment with a number of different types of ink and see if I get a variation on what I come up with. For this one, um, I tried different colors and different effects and, you know, dropping it on the paper and adding some blending solution and still wasn't happy with what I got. So I decided to uh, change colors, clean out my pan, and do something different. So what I do is uh, use some distilled water in my pan and I keep the jug because what I do is I take that alcohol water and I put it back in the jug because I don't think you want to put that stuff down your sink. So I put it in the jug for disposal and I'm picking out some colors to use on my next experiment. And I'm still working with um, these older inks. Some are Ranger and some are from uh, the Patina line. And you can see right away that that red has set up. It's clumping. It didn't spread out the way the other ink did at all. And that to me indicates that whatever it is that uh, binds that ink has already done its job and it's setting up in there. So if you have some older inks you may want to check them out. See how it's got big clumps of red. So I'm, now I'm chasing them around the pan trying to get them to stick to my paper because I want them out of there and I thought well if I'm gonna have polka dots I might as well have them all on one piece of paper right so then I thought well I'll add a few more why not you know let's just make a thorough mess of this so yeah when I say experiment I mean experiment because that's what I do I just play you know it's sometimes happy accidents come about when you do this and you're going to see that later on in my play because um, yeah this isn't the only thing that I did and yes I did find a happy accident so I'll share that with you later on um, because I just continue with this and just continue with this and keep going and still not happy and rubbing it around on the bottom trying to pick it up and hmm okay let's add some more colors see if we can get something else going yeah not sure that any of that did any good so we'll dip again yeah about the same results. Looks like chicken pox. <laughs> anyway, let's skip on to the next session. Okay, so while I was playing with the alcohol and water bath <laughs> and producing these pieces, 
Um, I'm thinking I can cut these up and use them in other projects. The interesting thing was this was the patina, and I think it's because my patina ink is really old, and I think the resin in it had started to set up already, and so you can see it was a bit crustier than some of these other inks that are a little bit fresher, but um, you can get a nice marbling effect, and one thing that I've learned is I think I want to go with some lighter colors and less of it. Um, I can always dull this back with a little bit of paint, but these to me are a little brighter than what I was hoping for. So, you know, they'll end up being some kind of art that I use, but um, this was just an experiment, and that's what I do. I experiment with a lot of these things. This was 140-pound uh, watercolor cardstock. Okay, now, the other thing I wanted to play with today is Yupo. So I have this big pad of uh, Yupo. It's 74 pounds, 10 sheets, 11 by 14, and what I did is I cut it up into some usable pieces. So, I started playing with this before I did the marbleization in water technique, and I've got a couple of stencils here that have been drying. Um, this is a just a fruit box. I've got some tissue, some deli wrap paper down in here. My whole box fell over while I was doing the other thing, so you can see the blue kind of migrated over here. Oh well, you know, it's an experiment, right? So I'm going to lift this. I'm sure it's not dry all the way yet, um, just because it's going to take a while to dry completely. But that's okay, because I want to reveal and show you what's underneath here. So there's one. And there is the other. And now that the plastic is off the top, I'm sure that this is going to dry a lot easier. Now, okay, so this is sort of an epic fail, and learn from my mistakes. I obviously am too anxious to get in here and do this. You really need to wait for this to dry. You can see that all of this kind of migrated together. It's still not even totally dry yet. Uh, so you want to leave the stencil in place. This was starting to come along. I like what's going on, but um, and it's not a total loss. I think I'll come back in with some alcohol markers and put the poppies back in here because I think it's got some potential. Um, this has some potential too, but you can see this is really way wet and I should have left the stencil in place. Um, so, that being said, on this one, I'm going to put that stencil back on top, if I can, and let it sit overnight and see what we get. See if I can get this lined up again. Not there. Hmm. Which way was I going? This way, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I found it. Okay, so I'm going to put this stencil back down and just tap that in place and see if I can salvage something out of that. And then, and I can see it's making contact here. So I will take photos of that tomorrow when I pull that off. And we will both see what patience gets us. And then in addition to that, I'm going to leave one on my work desk and let it dry. So let me do that.
So I have everything in place and I'm just going to use some blues on this. Uh, I have some stone washed and I think some sailboat. Okay, so here's the big finale and the big wahaha surprise because when I was cleaning things, remember these two? This was the, the one that I put the stencil back onto and it's still wet. I don't know if it's going to take a week or a month. And then this one, too, with the poppy, is still wet. And so I'm going to let this dry before I come back and do a little pen work on it. So I'll set that aside. I've got a band going over there. But what I did discover was when I was cleaning up my stencils, I was using this uh, hand sanitizer. And I happened to put a piece of Yupo down with a stencil with the hand sanitizer. And look at that nice pastel background I got by using the hand sanitizer. So I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Let's see where we can go with that. So, okay, this was that other original piece. And I came back in with the ink tool to this one and it's still wet because I had to move that ink around to get the stencil impression because it was still too wet and the ink was still migrating. Then I discovered what I did here is I painted my Yupo paper with a paintbrush you know, just take a take a paintbrush like this with the hand sanitizer and paint it down on the surface of your Yupo before you put this down. And you can see you get an entirely different effect, right? Where the sanitizer is, it's almost like a matte finish versus that shiny stuff. And here's the effect that you get with the mixatives. I mean, it looks almost rust. Really strange. So that was those two. And then my friend Sherry has a challenge out there. So she wanted me to use different colors together. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can use violet and orange and green together. Uh, but look what happens. Look what happens. And I used different ink. I ended up using the Copic ink and it was much more fluid. And you can see that I got a much more defined or crisp image. This is more of that um, clean off paper. And I like these almost as much as what's on the UPO. So go figure. <laughs> That's what I say about experimentation. You just don't know what you're going to get until you play. So have a play day, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.